just wanted to um, talk to you very briefly, less than five minutes, because again, my first Sundays are reserved for music and videos, words of inspiration, uh, where moments of laughter, things like that, but not a full out teaching. And so I just wanted, because I was thinking about um, Shanisha Taylor's case and um, just in life with us going through all of the different things and just thinking that God is not there for us or that he's forgotten about us and things like that. And so some scriptures that came to my mind that I want to share with you. Psalms 37 and 25 says, I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous nor his seed. Um, I'm sorry, yet I've mm -hmm. never seen the righteous nor his seed forsaken nor begging bread. So that just means that when I was young, I seen God do it. Now that I'm old, I'm go I believe that God is going to do it because he's did it before. So I wanted to share that and then Matthew 6 and 33 says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you." That is one of my favorite scriptures. Um I have a story behind that, but just for time's sake, I'm not going to give the story, but seek God first. Whatever it is that God wants to occur in your life, it will happen. We got to seek God first. Uh, Matthew 6 and 26, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? That's another one of my favorite scriptures. I believe I did a teaching on that where I talked about how birds don't have to worry about eating and where they're going to sleep and how flowers just grow. They grow everywhere. It don't even matter where they grow. And then they're here today, gone tomorrow. Are we not much more than flowers? We're God's children. We're heirs to his throne. I can go on about that all day. So... God will take care of us. And then Psalms 52 and 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be forsaken. That means that God got your back all the time, not sometimes, but all the time. And so those are some promises that God gives to his children. But there's also warnings in his word, right? Because God warns us, he blesses us, he makes us promises. He keeps his covenants and um, expects us to keep his commandments. And when we don't, he he warns us before he brings destruction upon us. And so Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end is the way of death. Now, does that mean a physical death in terms of, you know, you dying and having to be uh, buried six feet under? Sometimes it means that sometimes because when we're out of alignment with God, our bodies can come under attack. You know, sometimes when we're stressed, we gain weight, we lose weight, our weight go up and down and all these things. We just never have, you know, no peace. We're sick in our bodies. Sometimes we're trying to figure it out. Then went to the doctor, they can't figure it out. Sometimes these things happen because there's a way that we think is right. But when we're out of alignment with God, Nothing is ever right. Um, and then you have to think of that scripture in terms of the body, the soul, and the mind, right? So when you talk about soul, your spiritual, when that's disconnected from the creator, from the one that created you, what happens? We become restless. We have no peace. We think all kinds of things all the time, trying to figure out what do we do next, right? Because we are out of alignment. That's your soul is disconnected from the creator. You can't be disconnected from the one that created you because all things will go um, all out of whack, just all over the place. And then your body, you become very moody. When you're not in alignment with God, when you're not walking according to his commands you become very moody one day you're good the next day you don't want to be bothered one day you're happy you're laughing the next day you're crying people can't figure out well is she good today is she and not in a good mood can i approach can i approach just all just all over the place and then you got your mind where you can't think straight there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end there is death. Sometimes when we do certain things, we think that all is well. This is what I think to do, so let me go and do it. But I have a question. If that is the case, why is there no peace? Why can't you think straight? Why are you constantly thinking about a decision that you made? If it was the best decision, why do you have to keep thinking about it over and over and over again? There's no peace. You're overwhelmed with thoughts. Um, you change your mind today. You change it again tomorrow. Um, you try to cling to things that do not work for you. 
This is what we do when we are out of whack. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, there is death. Why? Because um, we have to know that God got everything. He has our back. When you pray to him, he sees all, he knows all concerning you. You don't have to put your little two cents in it. You don't have to try to help God out because when you do that, that's when things go crazy. Now, there was a part in the scripture with um jesus when he was in the wilderness there were three temptations that the devil came by but the second temptation is the one that i want to focus on because in the second temptation jesus is in the wilderness he's fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and um the devil comes to him and he says throw yourself off this pinnacle and charge the angels to come and save you because you you know you could do that charge the angels to come and save you and Jesus said, I will not put the Lord, my God, to a test. And what he was basically saying is that I know God could do it, but why do I have to put myself in a situation that I don't actually have to be in to see if God is going to come and see about me? We got to think about that stuff. There's stuff. There's a way that seems right to a man, but at the end, there is death. So what's our recourse? The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, not one thing, but in everything, every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving presents your request to God. And then it goes on to say, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Be anxious for nothing. That means don't worry about nothing. Don't be uneasy. Don't be nervous about nothing. But in all situations, that's your current state of being, all situations situations by prayer meaning communication with God and petition with thanksgiving that means you have to show some gratitude folks you got to show some gratitude present your request unto God so don't be anxious don't be nervous and nothing that's going on with you pray and present your request to God that doesn't mean that God is going to meet every request because some things we think that are good for us are not good for us and I'm going to speed right now and the peace of God what is the peace that's freedom from disturbance there's no disturbance that I'm peaceful I don't have no disturbance nothing in my mind is going to shake me anything I see it's not going to shake me I'm going to have peace I'm going to be free from disturbance I'm going to be calm and the peace of God which transcend that means it goes beyond it says transcends all understanding meaning that the peace of God goes beyond what you think what you can ask for it goes beyond that it transcends that um and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard. What does guard mean? Watch over, protect. What is it going to watch over and protect? It's going to watch over and protect your mind in Christ Jesus. And your heart. Let's not forget that. It'll protect your heart and your mind, which means that when you bring yourself in alignment with God, you pray those things that God wants. You know, you want those things that God wants for you because you're in communication. You're developing a relationship with God. So there's promises to God, but God warns us when we're not in right alignment with us. And once we come in right alignment with us, God then has more promises for us, but it's according to what we do with what we know. And so we know that anything that God starts, he finishes you have to believe that um so that's just what i wanted to share with you very quickly today so we're gonna go to another song then i'm gonna come back and offer the uh prayer of salvation and then we're gonna close the show we got another 10 minutes stick with me guys 